Hi, this is Al Fritch. We're starting a new series, how-to series, how to do different things that will save our environment. And so we're going to start with how to challenge fracking. Many of you know what fracking is already, and that would take an entire time for us to talk about uh, the mechanics of it, and it can be easily seen upon the internet. So instead, we're going to talk about what is happening uh, on short-term uh, uh, activities today, along with what really is going to happen with long-term effects of fracking. Fracking is a way of uh, processing and extracting natural gas and oil from the soil. It is a new technique. It's come in uh, to heavy prominence in America in the last five years. It's never been picked up by other countries, some of which, uh, some of these countries have the amount, the same amounts, or greater amounts, uh, of potential fracked oil and gas, as does the United States. It's just that we're ahead of them. But what's the good parts that have been happening? Well, for one thing, it creates jobs, you know, and it makes our country energy independent to some degree, and if not, it's going to be very soon. And it also is cheap energy. We all know that every time we go to the filling station. And uh, it enriches a few. Now, that can be a plus for them. It's a minus for our democratic society. But anyway, there's other minuses, and we'll bring those up quickly and then talk about what we can do to challenge. Uh, the first of these would be social disruption of communities like in North Dakota and Texas, which has large amounts of fracking operations right now, also in Pennsylvania and West Virginia. In fact, a person came to us and talked recently, Bill Hughes from Wetzel County, West Virginia, and it's been heavily fracked, and there's a lot of other difficulties that are associated with it. One of these is it, well, it causes a lot of congestion on local roads which were not built for it, along with noise. There's air pollution, and uh, to a great degree. Uh, and also there's uh, the water pollution with all the tremendous amount of water that's used, and it takes a large quantity in order to do the fracking operation. There's land disturbance because you have to create platforms on which uh, equipment is stored or used in the actual drilling. And there's and also the, the uh, different um, uh, pipelines that are taking the natural gas uh, from there over to uh, more processing, compressing places and on to the consumer. So we have, uh, and then there's a safety involved, both for the workers and for the people living in the areas, with some uh, peer-reviewed uh, 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 research showing that higher uh, birth defects are occurring in some areas where there's heavy uh, fracking going on. And, um, and then there's that also that area of uh, earthquakes, uh, especially there are minor ones in Ohio and Pennsylvania, but when you go, uh, Oklahoma actually reported one that was around five, uh, which is getting pretty powerful. The, uh, but anyway, these are negative effects, but there's, those are short-term effects. What's happening today? What we, can, what we must look at from an environmental standpoint, it's its long-term effect, and that is <clears throat> we're trying to move from a carbon-based economy to a renewable energy economy. This is being slowed down right now because of the fracking that's going on. Uh, a few uh, last year, it, a few of the months actually had where all of the electricity and new generating capacity in the United States was coming uh, from renewables, whether hydro or wind or, or uh, solar or other uh, methods. But in the last few months, we also are beginning to see that uh, natural gas is picking up to such a degree that almost uh, half, on an average, because every month's different, almost half will be coming uh, from fracked natural gas. And so we have to see that it is slowing up a process that we need to have in this country and world. And this is a great year of decision as December approaches and... Uh, in uh, Paris, they've got to make major decisions, and yet our fracked gas stands in the way. And not only that, it's panicked us in Kentucky, and they have a group called um, Frack Free Foothills, and they've had a massive meeting. Uh, people are being panicked into wanting to be what the others are, and that is getting leases and getting some of the money 
but they are also finding in a great degree that is affecting the community, an area which has had a lot of tourists in the past, and this the scene will be changed to where even the potential for tourism will be lessened. So this is one state, and <clears throat> we're far behind others, and we still are ahead of some, but the leasing is occurring, and some people say it is very poor as far as a policy going uh, of people getting some funds and disrupting the entire community, which is basing its economy on something different. So let's remember that we've got to challenge it. Now, how do we challenge? Well, we challenge by knowing what it is, first of all, as we've been talking, and we challenge by telling others, making sure it gets out, because some people think, oh, natural gas is clean. Well, it isn't clean when we consider that methane is 20 times the amount of a greenhouse effect, as is uh, the use of, uh, of uh, coal and, and the carbon dioxide, which comes from that uh, in greater amounts than it does from natural gas. But we also have to realize that uh, we are at a stage of where uh, we are going to have uh, large amounts of natural gas leaking, and we don't know how much, because every company, every site uh, differs not only in today, but it will differ tomorrow from what it is today. And if natural gas is cheap, well, some people will not want to save every ounce of it, and that's what makes a difference. If it's 2% loss, well, we can sort of handle it. If it's 6% loss, we're heading co towards catastrophe because there will be so much climate change way beyond what we can handle at this time. A lot of oceans rising, a lot of uh, landscape changing to where agriculture will be uh, challenged in areas. So we, we have a lot of troubles that are coming with fracked fuel, and they're part of a general approach that we need renewable energy, and we need a renewable energy economy, ASAP, as soon as we can do it because uh, we are reaching uh, a stage where the rise of temperature will be more than two degrees centigrade and when it gets higher and higher and the earth warms up we are going to have major problems in our world and your grandchildren are going to feel them very much. So really fracking was a distraction. It is something that's taken us away from something we must do in a Manhattan type project and which means that within a decade we could move to a totally renewable energy economy. And that's something to talk about in a how-to also. But right now, we need to challenge. Challenge it by a whole variety of ways. Uh, the videotape that we have, or from fa Facebook, or from uh, any of the uh, uh, programs that we have at schools, or churches, civic organizations, we need to take a second look at something which seems good at times, giving us cheap energy, giving us security, but really is not in the long term. Let's think about that. This is something that we can do individually and as communities and setting up our own areas in which we will really challenge fracking at this time.